Silencer Co. copies me, updates on stag arms and can cannons, and one of the most comfortable holsters I've ever used, all on this week's TGC News. Have you ever wondered how many things you can attach to your gun with the KDG Connect and side lock mounts? It's a lot. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Kinetic Development Group. Keep it simple, stupid. To get 10% off your entire order, use the code TGC10 at KineticDG.com. Welcome back, my name is John Patton and I have two super important ANNOUNCEMENTS! <laughs> First up, the Stone Mountain machine gun shoot is happening this coming weekend. I want to see you there, so if you live in the Northeast, make it happen. There's a link in the description to find out more. Second, if you're going to the NRA annual meeting this year in Louisville, you need to hear this one. I'm hosting the ultimate gun guy Q&A panel slash meet and greet on Saturday, May 21st at 1 p.m. You guys are gonna have a chance to meet your favorite gun guys like Chad and Eric from IV8888, Tim from Military Arms Channel, Whitey from Four Guys Guns, Sean from We Like Shooting, and 22 Plankster. And you can ask them any questions you want from how they make videos to what kind of guns they like and whatever else in between. On top of all of that, you're gonna have a chance to win a ton of prizes just for showing up and participating from companies like Tactical Walls, USA Chemical Supply, Manicore Arms, Sonoran Desert Institute, Savoy Leather, Key Bar, Jordan Cove Company, and more. This is the first time anything like this has ever been done, so it's going to be an awesome time, and if you're going to be at the NRA annual meeting in Louisville this year, check the link in the description to get your tickets now. And how about some news, huh? This is a new show. Let's do that. <laughs> this week's first story is about how Silencer Co. straight up copied me. I don't really know if that's where they got the inspiration, but we sure do have similar tastes. A while back, I picked up a beautiful Bighorn Armory Model 89 chambered in 500 Magnum, and I threw my Bowers Verse 50 suppressor on it. At the time, it was quite literally the only rifle like it, and honestly, it could very well still be that way in the 50 cal version. Well, Silencer Co. just announced they're partnering with Bighorn Armory to bring out a suppressed version of their Model 90, not the 89, the 90, which is chambered in 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum and has a special version of their hybrid big bore suppressor to keep things quiet. Now, being a proud owner of one of these incredible rifles, I can tell you firsthand that they are really well crafted and just a beautiful thing to look at. And they're tons of fun to shoot too. Sort of like an affordable version of the Holland and Holland stuff I was talking about before. The package also comes with a scabbard from a company called Winding Wheel Supply and has some cool embossing with the different logos on the side. All of that for a mere $5,200, $5,200. And now that I know you're ready to get one because that price only stings just a little bit, right? <laughs> They're only gonna be making 25 of these combos ever. I wanna have a matching rifle like this just like my other one. <laughs> the longest short of this is I'm still okay with it because I have the 50 cal and this 460 is just a compadre to that. It's going to be so cool and I love what Silencer Co. is doing with these different combos that they're coming out with. They've worked with a whole bunch of really cool companies to bring out special packages and I love it. And in I was wondering about that news, I have a couple updates for you guys. First off, Stag Arms, the company that ran into some ATF issues for shoddy record keeping, has now been acquired by White Wolf Capital, the company that also owns Aero Precision and VG6 Precision. The company is currently up and running, Stag Arms is, but only time will tell if they'll be able to grow out of this issue and the negative crap around it. I'm fairly certain a poll at a gun store would reveal that most people didn't even know this happened, so I'm betting that they're gonna do okay in the long run. And another ATF related update, this time on X products. You may remember a few months back when their soda can launching AR-15 upper, otherwise known as the can cannon, was deemed a short barreled rifle by the ATF. Yeah, it makes no sense. It seemed like a ridiculous thing and still does, but apparently the ATF's big issue was the fact that you could chamber a live 5.56 round in that upper with a quote unquote barrel that was only about this big. Very short, it's, it's ridiculous, the ATF sucks. Well, now they have a modified version where it's not 
possible to do that. Yay. For those of you that may own one of the pre-existing models, X Products is doing a free part swap for what they're calling a gas port, which is essentially where the barrel would go on a standard upper. You're gonna get that part swapped out for your old one. And good on them for making things right with their existing customers. If you're one of these people, I'm gonna put yet another link in the description on how to get squared away and legal. And on hashtag not a review, the segment where I take a product and give you guys a hands-on spotlight, we're taking a look at a holster that I've been curious about for a long time and finally had the chance to investigate. The Onyx Inside the Waistband Holster from Stealth Gear USA. I had heard these things were good, but I'm skeptical of every holster company out there, so I figured, uh, why not give it a shot? The thing that sets these apart from other inside the waistband holsters is that instead of using all Kydex or all leather or a combo of those two, Stealth Gear has decided to use this material they're calling Vent Core as the backer for this thing. A lot of times when you wear holsters inside the pants, they can get extra sweaty and gross, especially when you're a big bastard like me. And as we all know, metal parts and moisture don't mix. This Vent Core material aims to release heat and moisture right through it to make the experience more enjoyable for the end user. The best way for me to describe the way it feels, imagine the top part of your shoe with a gun attached to it. It's firm, but flexible, and it breathes like a supportive athletic shoe. It's really a good thing. On top of that, they also use a well-constructed Kydex shell to fit the gun and using screws on the front, you can adjust the tension and lock the gun in any way you want but out of the box, this thing was actually good for me. The overall build quality of this holster was just flat out good. I also found that unholstering and reholstering for practice wasn't cumbersome like it can be with other holsters. That actually kind of caught me off guard. I went to put it back in, I was like, oh, that went right in. I didn't have to fumble with it. Cool. So you get all the adjustability you would normally demand from an inside the waistband holster, plus high comfort levels and good construction. Sounds like a win to me, especially right at a hundred bucks. If you guys want to learn more about the Onyx inside the waistband holster, you can click the link in the description. Yes, more links to head over to stealthgearusa.com and be sure to stick around until after the break for this week's friendly fire question. The Rapid Application Tourniquet System from RE Factor Tactical is one of the fastest life-saving tools around. Made of half-inch wide flat bungee cord, it stows away nicely in one of their tourniquet holders. Safe for canines and children, the RATS is also half the cost of other tourniquets on the market, even with the robust locking system. To get 10% off your entire order, use the code TGC10 at refactortactical.com. This week's friendly fire question is from Solus Killa on Snapchat, and he asks, what was your first gun and what was the first gun you bought? The first gun that I remember being mine was this old school lever action, single shot 22 long rifle that I used to destroy soda cans in the backyard as a kid. Then when I got older, I bought myself this Smith & Wesson 686 Plus with a six inch barrel because I love a good stainless wheel gun. I haven't shot this thing in a very, very long time, but I still love it with all my heart. This is one of my favorites. My friendly fire question to you guys this week, how do you feel about all of these modified Glocks we keep seeing all over the place? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, you can post that on facebook.com slash the gun collective. You can send it to me on Snapchat Snapchat or post it on Instagram and be sure to tag me. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Give it a like and share it with your friends. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.